Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our Arabic class. We are doing the Median Arabic course book one and we are still busy with the ending part of lesson number 15, even though it's our 50th lesson so far. But we're starting from the uh, uh, beginning of page 90 to uh, tonight, inshallah, ending of the exercises and like I say, running towards the end of the lesson. So without any delays, let's begin. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So exercise number five says, Ba'afi al-amakin fi al-amkinati al-khaliyati fi al-jumali al-atiyati dhamiran muttasilan lil-mukhatabi ka kum ki kunna. They say place in the following uh, uh, blank spaces fi al-jumali al-atiyah in the following sentences, a dhamiran muttasilan lil-mukhatabi, a, a possessive pronoun which is associated to the person that you, the mukhatab, the second person that you are speaking to. Third person, somebody who's not there, second person, the one you are speaking to, and you are first person. So mukhatab, it's referred to as mutakallim, first person. Mukhatab, second person. Ghaib, third person. In English, we just say first person, second, third person, uh, second person, and third person. But those are the Arabic names for the three. So obviously they, he gives you four over here. You have to use these four in these eight sentences using the appropriate one when necessary. So Aina Beitu Ya Ikhwano Beitu. Now he gives you the line here to show you that one of these four must attach here. So which one do you take? So you look and you follow the sentence Ya Ikhwano. Ya Ikhwano. So Ikhwan is what? It's plural masculine. Ergo. The answer is kum. Aina baytu kum ya ikhwanu. Where is all your houses, oh my brother, oh my brothers? Number two, ahada kitabu ya hamidu. So this one here, you look at it, hamid, one man you're speaking to, so therefore you would use singular masculine, which is ka. Ahada kitabu ka ya hamidu. Is this your book, oh hamid? Number three. Sa'atu, blank, jamilatun ya Layla. Layla is who? A woman, singular. And Sa'a, as you know, is feminine because, if, I mean, jamilatun is feminine because of Sa'a being feminine. So Sa'atu ki, because it's one woman. Sa'atu ki jamilatun ya Layla. Your watch is very beautiful, oh Layla. Number four. Or oh, at least I should say it's beautiful, not very. We would say Jiddan if we were saying very. So your watch is beautiful, oh Layla. Number four, man abu, possessive pronoun must come in, ya akhawatu. Akhawat, as you can tell, is plural feminine, plural feminine. So man abu kunna, ya akhawatu. Man abu kunna, ya akhawatu. Who is your father? Oh, uh, sisters. Number five, masmu something, ya akhi. Akhi, singular, singular masculine, obviously. So, masmu ka, ya akhi. Masmu ka, ya akhi. What is your name, oh my brother? Number uh, six, masmu, ya ukhti. So, feminine, singular, masmu ki, ya ukhti. What is your name, oh my sister? Number seven, a ummu fil baiti. A ummu fil baiti. Now this one here, you can see from the context here, you, we don't know who you are speaking to. So you could say, a ummu ka fil baiti, a ummu kum fil baiti, a ummu ki fil baiti, a ummu kunna fil baiti. Any one of the four will fit in the sentence here. Because like you were following, this is the person you are speaking to. Ikhwan, Layla, Akhi, Ukhti, Akhwat, Hamid. In each case, you knew the number and gender of people you are speaking to. But in this case, you are asking this person or people, you're asking about their mother. Is their mother in the house? Is your mother in the house? Is her mother in the house? Etc. Etc. So a ummuka, a ummukum, a ummuki, a ummukunna, all four can fit in here. So whichever one you had chosen, you would be correct because you know, like I say, it, it, the context doesn't give you anything. Then you have, uh, so is your mother, is all of your mother, is you one woman, is it your mother or all of you women, all your mother? So is your mother in the house? Then ma asma'u 
something يا إخوانو أسماء plural إخوانو plural masculine so ما أسماءكم يا إخوانو ما أسماءكم يا إخوانو what is all of your names oh my brothers oh my brothers what are your names so to speak That's the end of exercise number five. Let's move on to exercise number six. So it says, "ضعف الأماكن الخالية في ما يلي ضميرا مناسبا للمتكلم." أنا نحن. Now remember what I just spoke about earlier. مخاطب second person. متكلم first person. So the context of this exercise is "ضعف الأماكن الخالية في ما يلي." Place in the following blank spaces in the sentences which follow a ضميرا مناسبا للمتكلم an appropriate preposition uh, 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 an appropriate pronoun for first person either using أنا or نحن because as you know first person doesn't make a distinction between gender so whether you are a man or a woman you will say أنا and whether you're a group of men or women you will say نحن there is you know it doesn't there's not one type for men and another type for women the same word is used for both genders so he says where appropriate when it's singular use singular when it's plural use plural so let's look at them number one something muslimon so muslimon singular masculine obviously yeah okay let me not put masculine in because masculine doesn't even play a role like i say first person whether it was singular masculine or singular feminine the same word ana would be used so singular ana muslimon i am a muslim the word next one number two is muslimuna which is plural nahnu muslimuna we are muslims number three is muslimatun singular feminine ana muslimatun so ana muslimun ana muslimatun ana does not change and then number four is muslimatun so nahnu muslimatun like nahnu muslimuna nahnu and ana like they don't change at all they are as they are and they work for both genders that's number four we are all uh, all women all are muslim number five nahnu banatul mudiri banatu because it's uh, plural not bintun but banat so banatul mudiri nahnu banatul mudiri we are the principal's daughters number six ibnul mudarrisi so anabnul mudarrisi ana ibnul mudarrisi but you join over it and it becomes anabnul mudarrisi i am the teacher's son number seven is tulabun tulabun as you know is plural masculine so nahnu tulabun we are students and the last one number eight is maridatun which is singular feminine so therefore ana maridatun i am sick <coughs> Obviously, maridatun is singular feminine. So, ana maridun if you are a man, ana maridatun if you are a woman. And that's the end of exercise number six. Very simple and straightforward. You know, we already are well beyond this level when it comes to the uh, pronouns and possessive pronouns. But because the book teaches you in a piecemeal form of these things, so therefore, what it's teaching you is something you should already actually be knowing. But anyway, let's move on. Number seven, exercise number seven, Iqra wa aktub, read and write. So in this one, reading and writing, you are more to pay attention to what the lesson is teaching you. So, or at least what the exercise is showing you. So number one of this exercise says, ذَهَبَ أَبِي إِلَى الْقَاهِرَةِ قَبْلَ أُسْبُوعٍ ذَهَبَ أَبِي, my father went, إِلَى الْقَاهِرَةِ to Cairo. Qahira is the Arabic name for Cairo. قَبْلَ أُسْبُوعٍ before a week usbu usbu means a week qabla means before uh, but in english when we would say we would say a week ago but in arabic you would say qabla usbu'in before a week works out to the same thing you know it was before a week we wouldn't speak like that in english but that's the arabic version so what the point why you underline this year is to make to point out to you that when you have qabla the word qabla then the word which follows it get a kasra. You you don't say because you know by default words tend to end with a dhamma. So there needs to be, as you know, some excuse, some cause to make it change from being a dhamma or dhamma tain at least. So it's changing from, for example, usbu'un is becoming usbu'in. And the reason why it's becoming usbu'in is because of the word qabla. 
So that's what he's pointing out to you in this exercise, that when you use the word qabla, the word which follows it gets a kasra. Okay, so anyway, that was number one. Number two, mata kharajta min al-fasli ya Muhammadu. Mata kharajta min al-fasli ya Muhammadu. When did you leave from the class? When did you exit from the classroom, oh Muhammad? Kharajtu ba'da darsi Kharajtu ba'da darsi I kharajta, you, second person, you one man. When did you go out? And he says, kharajtu, I, first person, I went out. Kharajtu, and when was that? Ba'dad darsi, after the lesson, after the lesson, ad darsi, ba'dad darsi. So you see from the uh, exercise, uh, from uh, sentence number one is qabla, and from uh, sentence number two, the word ba'da, uh, one means before, one means after. In both cases, they cause the word which follows it to get a kasra. So ba'dad darsi, after the lesson. Okay, this one fits in very easily. Uh, uh what in this context but if you you say uh i will go which literally would mean after a week we would say in english in a week's time but in arabic we would say after a week so that's why sometimes or at least always i tend to make that same statement that we tend to make mistakes when we think in english and translate our english speech into arabic based on our English thing. So we would say, وقت, which would be time, في وقت أسبوعين, something like that a person would end up saying. Because you're thinking in English, so you think, if I verbatim translate it, it should come out to this. But that's not the way it works in Arabic. So you would say, بعد أسبوعين, قبل أسبوعين, a week ago, or a week, in a week's time. So when did you exit from the classroom, oh Muhammad? I exited after the lesson. Moving on to number three, he says the hub two. So how would you know whether this was the hub ta, the hub ti, or the hub two? You look at the sentence ila al masjidi qabl al adhani to the masjid before adhan qabl al adhani qabl usbu'in usbu'in because there's no alif and lam. Adhani, because alif and lam, as you know, tanween and alif and lam, alif and lam cannot exist at the same time on a word. So, qabla al-adhani, before adhan. So, the habta ila al-masjidi, qabla al-adhani. You went to the masjid before adhan. The habta ila al-masjidi, qabla al-adhani. You, one woman, you went to the masjid before adhan. Now, while the sentence is correct, it doesn't exactly make all that much sense. Whereas if I'm telling you, I went to the masjid uh, be before uh, Adhan, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I I'm telling you, I'm giving you some news, some information. If I told you, the habta ila al-masjid qabla al-adhani, how would this fit into a normal sentence? It would be if a person asks you, you know, when did I come to, when did I go to, to the masjid? And then you reply and you tell them, the habta ila al-masjid qabla al-adhani. Uh, you went to the masjid before Adhan. For, for example, or no, even that one would not be 100% accurate because if it, uh, it is possible, but not really used. The reason is because if this person who's answering the question happened to be in the masjid, then he would have said, you came to the masjid. You came to the masjid before Adhan. So, uh, you, therefore, the, the most fitting prepos, uh, pos, uh, pronoun to use in this case would be Anna. So, the habtu, the, the habtu is Anna, first person, I went. So, I went to the masjid before the, before the Adhan. Obviously, it's on a little bit higher level, but uh, to know whether one or all will work, but you will learn that as you go on in life. But for now, Let's just uh, focus on this, that in this particular context, the word is the hub too, that I went to the masjid before Adhan. Okay, that was number three. Let's move on to number four. Mata zahaba ammuki ila riyadi ya aminatu. Zahaba qabla shahrin. So the a question is posed to a woman named Amina. Mata zahaba ammuki. Ammuki. Your 
paternal uncle. When did your paternal uncle go to Riyadh or Amina? And Amina replies by saying, Zahaba qabla shahrin. He went before a month. Once again, keeping in mind, we will translate it as he went a month ago. So when you are translating, okay, it's not exactly something a person needs to point out. Anybody who has any uh, sense would know such things. But if you were translating, be it a book or you're writing your own homework, or whatever, you would translate this as uh, he went a month ago. And you wouldn't take it on the virtue of the individual words. Qabla means before. So he went before a month. You wouldn't translate it that way. Because remember, purpose of translation is to make it understandable for the reader or listener so if you're going to say he went before a month the normal person who reads it won't know what you are talking about what you are meaning those who have the understanding and understand that you don't know what you're talking about hence why you're making this mistake they'll understand what you are really intending but the other person who don't know will be like what exactly are you saying so therefore you translate it as he went a month ago so qabla usbu'in Qabla shahrin, qabla yawmin, qabla sanatin, you know, and so on and so forth, whichever uh, amount of time you want to attach to it, sana, which is a year, uh, shahrin, which is a month, usbu'in, which is a week, yawmin, which is a day, uh, sa'atin, which is an hour, qabla sa'atin, uh, an hour ago, you know, and so on and so forth. But when the qabla is attached to it, or ba'da, qabla or ba'da, it makes the word which follows it get a kasra. So that was number four. Number, last one for the page. Number five. أقبل الصلاة ذهبت إلى المطعم لا ذهبت بعد الصلاة. The a question is asked that was it before Salah that you went to the matam? Matam literally means a place of eating, which is translated as a restaurant. Now it can be a restaurant, it can be a takeaway, it can be a cafeteria, uh, it can be even a kitchen, it can be any place which is a place of eating. But in the context that we are understanding it, it means the restaurant. So when, the, oh, okay, if you want to take it in the context of a school, it would refer to the, the cafeteria uh, one way or the other. But simply put, the linguistic meaning of matam means a place of eating. So was it before salah that you went to the restaurant? No, I went after the salah. That's the end of page 90. Let's move on to 91. In the blocks over here, he's simply pointing out to you the six uh, possessive uh, pronouns. So uh, he says, Aina the Habta, Aina the Habta, Ya Achi. Where did you go, oh my brother? The Habta, second person, the person, one man you're speaking to. Aina the Habtum, Ya Ikhwani. Where did all of you go, oh my brothers? Aina the Habti ya Ukti. We uh, like I say, it's not exactly anything new. We have done it just above, and we have done it a couple of times in the past before. But Aina the Habti, where did you go, oh my sister? Aina the Habtuna ya Akhawati, where did all of you go, oh my sisters? Ana the Habtu, I went. Nahnu the Habna, we went. Now, one thing I would point out over here is that. When it comes to Ana the Habtu and Nahnu the Habna, this is not eloquent speech. They is putting it here for the purpose of making you understand. But you, you would say the Habtu ila al matami, like you would see in just here above in the sentence, the Habtu ba'da salati, the kharajtu ba'da darsi, the Habtu ba'da salati, not Ana the Habtu ba'da salati, Ana kharajtu ba'da darsi. It's not eloquent speech to speak in that manner but he puts it here for the purpose of making you understand what is contained within tu within tu is ana within na is nahnu within tunna tum ta ti ka kum ki kunna as you would know them in that manner but all of this like i say is covered in the abdamair uh, booklet that we have done so you can always refer back to that booklet. It will put all of the pronouns and possessive pronouns in their correct places. So I went, we went. Uh, he then says, Al-Kalimatul Jadidatu, the new words, meaning the words that we had done during the course of the lesson. 
قبل which means before بعد which means after كيف which means how متى which means when uh, الأسبوع the week الشهر the month الأذان the أذان الصلاة the صلاة رجع he returned اختبار اختبار which means exam and now the last one for page 91 it says الضمائر المنفصلة الضمائر المنفصلة which would translate as uh, pronouns the منفصلة which means separated the ضمائر the unattached pro, uh, pronouns which we would just simply say is the pronouns and the others are the possess possessive pronouns so this is the regular pronouns lil mund lil mufradi for singular lil jam'i for plural so singular and plural huwa talibun he is a student hum tullabun they are students hiya talibatun she is a student hunna talibatun they those women they are students anta talibun you are a student Antum tullabun, all of you, all you men are students. Anti talibatun, uh, you are you a woman, you are a student. Antunna talibatun, all you women are students. Ana talibun, I am a student. Nahnu tullabun, we are students. Ana talibatun, I am a student, in this case being the feminine form. I am a female student. Nahnu talibatun, we are female students. So, Essentially, what he has given you is Hua, whom, Ia, Hunna, Anta, Antum, Anti, Antuna, Ana, Nahno. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As you know, there are 14 pronouns, and he's given you 10. So, the own, in other words, we've actually literally done everything with the exception of the dual form. Huma, Huma, uh, uh, which would be antuma antuma because antuma uh, antuma is used both for masculine and for feminine and huma is used both for masculine and feminine so uh, because dual is something that other languages don't have so therefore he'll keep the dual form to be taught taught at a later point in time for now he just simply taught you these uh 10 because they are the most common used ones and basically it's everything that you need to know for now so that's the end of uh, lesson number 15. It's the end of page 91. And it is also the end of our class until after uh, Eid, inshallah. This will be our last class for the next two months, uh, essentially, because whole of March, whole of April, so with Eid probably being around the 2nd of May or, or so, 2nd, 3rd of May, somewhere around about there, we'll see close to the time. But we won't start, obviously, the day after Eid. It will be uh, probably about a week at least so that we, you can have time to find your footing again. And, and obviously our class times will have shifted a bit because by that time, two months have passed uh, and we'll try and we'll be moving obviously closer into winter. We'll be at least in uh, autumn at that time. So we'll shift the time a little bit earlier so that we are not this late doing classes at night. But that will be if and when we meet again inshallah ta'ala we will continue on from lesson number 16 but if i can put one thing down upon you at this point in time you have essentially in front of you two months or even if you put ramadan out of the question you've got one entire month before the month of ramadan begins because today is the second of march tomorrow is the third of march ramadan will possibly begin on the 3rd of April at night, the 4th of April will possibly be the first fast. So you have literally one entire month before Ramadan comes in. Take out the time. You know very well where your level is uh, with the Arabic. You know, it, it's, I don't want to say you're wasting your time. If you are sitting in the class and time is passing you by, you are not understanding the lesson, you're letting the days just a while away and at the end of the day we end up completing the book and you ask yourself how much did i understand of the book how much of arabic do i know if i open surah fatiha how much can i understand you know in reality i taught this book to i've been teaching the book for 10 years now but i mean the the last time i taught this to someone in person and he we were not even done with 
book one and when he was reading surah fatiha when he was reading uh, surah kahf etc he was saying how you know he could begin to understand snippets here and there of the quran he didn't do big vocabulary or anything we only did the book what was done in the book and yet it was enough for him to be able to reach that level i thought this uh, book on P- uh, pal talk back in the day and somebody who learned it back there in those years and that was 10 years ago and he went from not knowing anything to also being able to read and you know you can start to recognize words here and there as you go along so you know i don't want that you spare waste your time i'm going to call it what it is to waste your time that you go through every week you sit in a class half an hour 40 minutes even and then you know you don't get the purpose of why you are there which is to learn arabic so that you can reach a point where you can read and understand the quran understand the ahadith and you know everything that goes along with it rather than saying i sat in in classes for 49 uh, years and i still don't know what is being said the purpose why we learn is so that we can imbibe it practice upon it and obviously arabic is the first step towards everything whether you want to be a, st- a st- student of the deen or whatever everything begins with learning arabic so that's why we are doing this arabic in the first place otherwise i may as well have been teaching japanese over here too so, but we learning arabic for the sake of being able to understand the quran and understand the ahadith understand the books of deen but if you are not going to put in the effort you are not going to make progress and properly if we were doing things properly then like tonight we had done at least at the, uh, exercise 5 and 6 it would have been something that you were supposed to have done all the exercises and sent it all into me to show that yes you have understood it so before we are doing the lesson you have already number 1 you are putting in the effort to go over it before class and number 2 you have understood the lesson plus you are able to do the exercises but if you are not putting in the effort and you are not understanding the lesson then you know we must ask ourselves what exactly are we doing here so i don't want that we end up doing the entire book one and then when the person asks you uh ma hada and you can't even reply and say hada kitabun i don't know what that is even though that was on the beginning pages of of the book so you know the purpose is that we must be able to understand arabic that's why i keep saying over and over and over again or at least i haven't said it in a while but i always used to say that if you have any questions ask 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 and ask 100 times over until you understand it so that we don't end up moving on and it's just uh, fallen off you like water off a duck's back without you understanding anything so we stopping at this point here inshallah but like i say you have now all the time for you to be able to take out some time in your day and all of these classes uh, i will try and have this class uploaded as soon as possible hopefully tomorrow inshallah but all of these classes are available on the darul ilm channel on youtube you can go literally from class 1 till where we are right now at class 50 50 classes which have passed by in this manner on this medina arabic course book 1 and I tell you this now if you are not understanding anything of arabic and you start from the, just following the recordings from lesson 1 then inshallah by the time you reach lesson 50 and you have put in the effort then you would be able to understand everything that has been done so far if you do happen to have any questions you are welcome to still send them to me on whatsapp but if you do it things properly you wouldn't even need to have anything to ask because everything is crystal clear explained in the book but like i say i am still here to be able to answer your questions while you are doing your homework but that being said we end on this point here for tonight inshallah ta'ala until we resume again one day inshallah we end and we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh